I, I was involved in the BLP cleanup in on the English Wikipedia. So if you fancy joining me for a cup of coffee, I can tell you what happened with, with that process. Is he? Jonathan Paul's is not a
ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all for making the effort for coming so early on a Sunday morning. I'm sure most of us would have liked an hour of bed, but it's great to have you here. Anyway, you're in luck because today we have three great speakers for you and three very interesting sessions. First of all, we have Gerard Mason, who's going to be talking to us about the opportunities and challenges of Wikidata. As you know, Wikidata is the, the central database of information which underlies all the Wiki projects and will increasingly make it easy for us just to put information in there and it populates to, to everything. Secondly, at 10 o'clock, we've got Cabal for Dummies, which will be about starting and running a local group. Where is it's been rearranged. Well, <clears throat> no, apparently for business reasons, the, the chap who's supposed to be presenting it is no longer available. Oh. So it's been cancelled. So biographies of living people yeah. is not happening. So if you're expecting biographies of living people, I know it's on the printed program, but on the online program, obviously we couldn't go to the expense of printing off a whole new set of programs every time one thing changes. So. Uh, yes, I agree with you. What can I say? I apologize on their behalf. When I see them, I shall have a firm word, and it won't happen again. So, not I'm in sorry. London. Not in London. No, indeed. Not in London, but somewhere else. And there's plenty of resources on the web or so forth. Anyway, and finally, at um, 10.30, we will have um, 10 years of Wikimania now. What? Apparently, there's either six or eight people who've been to every Wikimania, and they're going to tell us about the future of Wikimania. Right, we have also with us today our techie chap, Rob up there. Hi, Rob. And a social media person. I don't know who he or she is, but they're coming along shortly. Anyway, um, welcome. Hello, sir. Welcome. And without any further ado, I shall pass you over to our host for today, Opportunity and Challenges of Wikidata, Gerard Mason. <coughs> start with a challenge and that is basically uh, how to get this whole thing going. Uh, I have a presentation and it should show things and my computer is really old because my real computer is broken down and this one is the one before that so this is one still with Windows Vista and all that kind of good stuff. So opportunities and challenges making use of Wikidata. That's basically what I'm all about. Um, and yeah, it, I've got all kinds of problems. Basically, uh, my system is really... Is slightly, slightly no, slightly I don't know. Screen. F5, I don't know. Is it yeah, well, I... F11, I can't remember. No, that's not here. F1? Present. Oh, pre present? Maybe the drop down box. Ah. So. Ah. Well, okay, so then we should Thank go you. at the start. So, opportunities and challenges making use of Wikidata. That's basically what I'm going to talk about. Uh, it is in two parts. First, a little bit of a presentation uh, telling you some of the thoughts that I have, and that can be controversial because, hey guys, I'm a wiki data person and not a Wikipedian, so I don't really know the places where it hurts in Wikipedia world and I can trample all over you and not even intending to be insulting and all that kind of good stuff. Good, so this is one. Wikidata is not Wikipedia. And a Wikipedia, any Wikipedia, makes use of it. That's already true. They make use of it because of the inter uh, uh, language links. That's the first application that Wikidata has, and that is why Wikidata is relevant and will remain relevant and will remain uh, maintained. Never mind what else is happening. So, it's all about the application. If you put data in and it doesn't have any use, then you might as well not have it. So, Wikidata is used for the interlanguage links and there are aspirations to use the other data. Mind you, there are some issues. The first thing that you have to appreciate is that when you want to use the data in Wikidata, 50% of the data at this moment in time has no or one statement. That means effectively that we do not know what the, the item is there about. 
effectively when an item is linked to something like three, four, five or more Wikipedias or wiki quotes or what have you, uh, we do not know either what they are about. So you can imagine that, that understanding what Wikipedia has, what Wikidata has, is much of a challenge if you don't know what the fuck you have. For only something like 4% we have more than 10 statements, but you have to appreciate that when you have 10 statements, it can be that we have a GND, an FIAF, an IMDB, uh, a fourth, a fifth and a sixth, so the, uh, the effective amount of data that we know about the subject may be rather minimal. So please appreciate that when we're talking about Wikidata, at this moment in time, and things are improving by the week, um, uh, we, sh we suffer from a lack of data, we suffer from a lack of information, and as more information gets in, the information becomes more informative. When I say that Wikidata is informative, I'm not saying that when you look at the screen of Wikidata that it's informative. You will find that there is data there. So, informing is an application on top of what Wikidata offers. So, please understand that I'm talking all the time about application. If you want to make use of the data, you have to have an application. If you are a, a fanboy of the Harvard University, and there are fanboys of Harvard University who put in all um, articles in Wikipedia on everybody who ever studied on Harvard University, hey guys, we can do the same thing in Wikidata, and we can do the same thing for the Max Planck Institute, or for the uh, University of Vienna, or of Calcutta, or wherever. And actually, we try to put that information in when we can and where we can. What applications do we have? One of the applications is called Resonator. It prevents, presents information and uses logic to make what we have informative. And it does a hell of a good job. And as more information gets in, it becomes even better. We have a tool called AutoList2. It queries our data and uh, it allows us to make statements in Wikidata. Now the beautiful part of it, it's connected, uh, it's working in a connected world, so you can do beautiful things like we have a category, category uh, called um, uh, alumni of the <coughs> University of XYZ, and you can then start saying things like um, uh, alma mater University XYZ, and we are doing that all the time, and I'm going to show you that we actually do. So. The next big app will be comments. Now, there are an awful lot of people have been talking about it, but think of it from a Wikidata perspective. Comments is going to make use of Wikidata technology, so making sure that data gets into Wikidata will already may have an impact when once uh, comments gets wikidata -fied. It will not only become the repository where everybody can, it will become the repository where everybody can find pictures. And at this moment in time, it's only the repository where everybody can add to. That's a big difference. And the best part of it, it allows us to find pictures in your own language. Now, think of it. It means that if you have a, ch uh, a child from the Netherlands or from India or from the United States, they can <coughs> query in their own language for a horse, a part, a cheval, a cabello, or whatever. Really powerful. That's an application. So, what kind of other apps do we have? Well, we have an application, I'm going to show it in a moment, uh, that we can show what we consider that could be in a category in a Wikipedia based on the information we have in Wikidata. Consider, you have a um, you have a um, category called Authors of India. So there are people in German who write articles about authors in from India, and they do it in English, and they do it in Italian, and whatever. But they are not the same collection of authors. So you may have Indian authors who only have an article in the Italian Wikipedia, but thanks to this whole mechanism, we are able to show all authors who are from India. 
another thing that we could do is we could have uh, all the in we could include all the people that Amnesty International and Amnesty International worries about. Now, if Amnesty cares for people, then they do things like letter writing and all that kind of good stuff. But when we put that information in uh, Wikidata, we can make the same information available in multiple languages. So the sheer fact that we have the information in Wikidata means that the same information can be seen in uh, Chinese, in Dutch, in uh, Odia, in English, in German, in whatever. We can have monuments of any country. At this moment in time, we do have all the uh, monuments of the Netherlands, but why not have all the monuments of the uh, United States, of um, uh, Mexico, of Venezuela, of India, of China as well? It is just data, and if there are people who care for that data, we can have it. It is just a matter of having an application for it. Another thing that we can do, and that is really exciting for the Wikipedians of Among Us, we can compare information that we have in a Wikipedia with information in another Wikipedia by having, um, uh, by having Wikidata as an intermediary. Um, what else do I want to say? Um, so, is this the last one? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yes, it is. So, I can close that one. Yes. So, what do I do? Yeah, that is fun. So, now I'm going to become interesting. Um, what I have here is a um, tool script, that's one of the tools of Magnus, and what it shows on this side, on this side are people who died in 2014, and we don't know uh, if those people have been, uh, um, if they have a date of death on wiki uh, data, so we can start putting those things in. I do that all the time. So we have, for instance, this gentleman, Mr. Walter J. Sullivan, um, he died. And according to the, the categories of Mr. Sullivan, he is a member of the Massachusetts House of Representatives. And if I click on the category, I find him and all the other members of the um, um, Massachusetts House of Representatives. And using a tool, I can make all of them who are a human a member of the House of Representatives of Massachusetts. It takes me something like three minutes to do all of them. Now this is the category. <coughs> Sorry that my system is so slow, but you get the message. We are talking about 1,060 in total members of uh, uh, ha uh, Massachusetts House of Rep Representatives. And it, again, it takes me something like three minutes to do just that. Um, what do we have here? This is these are this is a list of contributions that I have been doing earlier today, and you will see that there is an awful lot of stuff in there. For instance, um, Mr. Bittleston is a citizen of India. Uh, Mr. Hussein is a citizen of India. Mr. Ruby Taylor studied at the Texas A&M University. Um, <coughs> list of aviation terms, which is a, an item that, an, an, an edit that I'm proud of. It is a Wikimedia list article. The importance of putting things in like it is a Wikimedia list article means that we effectively know that it is not a human. And I found this one because it was among categories where, of humans. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, these are categories, um, some 600 uh, plus of them, 623, and uh, if you click on the Reasonator button, and I will do that for astronomers, then you get astronomers from all over uh, the world, from any Wikipedia. Uh, I do blog, I will come back to that one, I, I, will, I do blog, and the screen doesn't update, so I go to the next one, which is my blog, which doesn't show. Anyway, out there you have Amir, Amir couldn't come. It wasn't denied. He was denied a visa. He has been staying in uh, Dubai for three weeks waiting for an, uh, a visa. 
I think he is the most uh, important guy in the Thai wiki bot uh, scene. He was the knight of vision. Wikimania in 2014 in London is not as good because of the, uh, the lack of Amir. <sighs> Sadly. Um, this is Indian uh, people by occupation and for all of them I make them as 27668 and which is a, an, a person from India. In this case I'm uh, working on 10,000 um, items and I have done 281. This is the other 8,000 uh, of them and I've done something similar, 284. This is, what is this? This is, these are the Nepalese people and there used to be uh, 523 that I needed to do and I've done them all. Um, these are members of the Illinois House of Representatives and I, there are 158 more to go. These are the uh, Texas A&M people and they are now done. Basically, identifying a category, adding all the ones that are missing, it takes something like three minutes and the, um, the software goes on and adds them all. The effect if, is that if you have, for instance, well, let me take, go back to this one because that is... So here you see uh, the resonator button because I want to talk about that as well. So if it does give me the... Yes, now it does. So if I look at resonator, you get information that is in um, weak data, but you get it in a way uh, that is human understandable. And the most beautiful part of it is, if you like to have it in German, you can have it in German. If you want to have it in Chinese, you can have it in Chinese. As you can see over here, I am Dutch. I like it in uh, Nederlands. Uh, okay, Miss uh, Neha Magda is a lady. I didn't know. She has a picture. She was born on 23rd of December in Calcutta, and <coughs> uh, she will uh, uh, gain uh, some uh, information uh, with, by uh, with an edit. So basically. Once you gain more items, more statements with an item, then the a bit of information that you have grows and uh, Wikidata becomes more informative. You can have more queries that are useful and reasonable. And yeah, well, basically that is the thing that I want to show you. Any questions? Either run a bot 
out and update the data in uh, in a Wikipedia by right, creating an article. And the thing that I've been championing for quite some time is that we should have a, a second option, which is you generate information based on the information that is available. You cache it, but you don't save it in Wikipedia. So when you don't save it in Wikipedia, you don't have a stop. So it is not counted as an article, which is fine. And if somebody wants to do something with an article because they want to say that um, Miss uh, Brigitte Pardot, for instance, lived there from uh, 1952 to 1956, and I'm making this up, obviously, then uh, they can, by starting with that stub text and as, as, um, using it as the basis for uh, the article that they actually uh, want to save. But that's, those are things that are easily possible, but we don't have them yet because basically it's not given much of a priority to think and do in that way. Next question. Yes, please. So last year, Wikipedia, um, there was this book that was published by Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes. Are we ready to go backwards? Okay. Okay. It, 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 is, it is really simple. If you want to include information on a specific subset of subjects, then that is an application. So what you do, first thing that you need to do is that the information is there and complete in your language, whatever your language is. And once that is done, you can use it. But when you go from the assumption that Wikidata has all the information for any um, um, info box, then you're mistaken. And I showed you why 50% of our uh, items have a zero or one statement. So think of it in terms of an application. You want to have info boxes on a specific subset of information. Make sure that all the information that you want to show is there. Make sure that it's available in your language and then it will work perfectly fine. So the technology works. That's the, bi the, the basic message. But like Wikipedia, you have to uh, make your own recipe. You have to stir it yourself. You have to present it yourself. You have to make sure that everything is fine. Once you have done it for your language, it is fairly trivial to do it for another language as well. Yeah, uh, when you import the full list based on the categories, you have statements. Yeah. In Wikidata, it says the source is another Wikipedia language version. Okay, sources in Wikipedia. I don't give a shit about sources in Wiki, sorry, in Wikidata. And the reason for it is simple. A source is a statement, and we have zero or one statements for 50% of our subjects. If you want to have, um, uh, if you want to have confidence about the data in Wikidata, then adding uh, sources does not help because it doesn't give confidence. What does give confidence is when you get a mechanism whereby the information in Wikidata is compared with the German, the French, the Italian, the English, the Dutch, the Hindi, the Chinese, whatever Wikipedia, and they are all the same. That has the added advantage that when there is one difference, that that is the moment when some Wikipedian or whoever is going to look in the data and say, this is correct and we have a source for it. So when you start thinking in terms of Wikidata and sources, basically you don't understand uh, the immaturity of Wikidata and you don't understand that you don't gain confidence by adding sources. You gain confidence by knowing that it's the same as what everybody else says. Does that make sense? Not really, but, uh, okay. I can see it's a with but do you see that? that so do you see that why this approach is practical and having a source which is basically lost in the information is not? I think having the, the source from outside somewhere in Wikidata that means the Wikipedia versions can use it then and say it's a reliable source instead of I can't use another Wikipedia language version as a source on another Wikipedia version. But you're thinking in terms of one place where you have all this stuff, and 
that is not, at this moment in time, Wikidata is not ready for that. The best it can do is, is be a comparative a source that you use to compare the information in multiple places. And all those Wikipedias say that they are so responsible and have sources, so if the Wikipedias agree that something is the case, then that should suffice. Okay, well, thank you. I'm sorry there's no time for any further questions, just when you really got excited about Wikidata and all the possibilities it has. But as you can see, the idea of just having one central place that can populate all the Wikipedia 274 languages and check that the data is correct or otherwise, it's a really amazing possibility what we can do with Wikidata. But talking about other amazing possibilities, we have up for you at 10.30 the two gentlemen who are part of an elite group of eight people who've been to every Wikimania, and they'll be telling us about the future of Wikimania. But before then, as I say, amazing possibilities, we have five people from Rennes in <coughs> France, and they're coming to us today to talk to us. Oh, I, I should introduce myself. I've not introduced myself. I'm Edward Hans, Edward X on English Wikipedia. I'm your host for today. And we also have Rob, um, who's our technical person. Hi, Rob. Um, right. So this is the, the, their session is called Cabal for Dummies, and there's five of them, possibly six, so that we've not seen Sebastian. Ah, six of them, Sebastian, Pierre-Yves, Edouard, same as me, but with a, a French accent, uh, Nicolas, Léa, and Benoit. And they're going to tell us about basically how to start and run a local group, how to grow it, how to maintain it, and how to make it fun. Ladies and gentlemen, Cabal for Dummies. Glad to introduce you, Cabal for Dummies from Line CO, the local group from uh, from Rennes. Hello, I'm uh, Sub 35 and only member of the NCO. Um, uh, the NCO is a group of uh, sympathetic Wikipedians from the west of the front. Uh, you have, uh, you have uh, Wikimania here in London and uh, the three main uh, cities. Uh, uh, in Brittany, uh, Rennes, Nantes, and Brest. And uh, <laughs> we, um, we meet uh, every, every <coughs> week uh, in uh, Rennes, and uh, we organize uh, some actions uh, in the whole Brittany, uh, some uh, Wikitex uh, operations. And uh, depending on the sources, uh, the NCO was founded between uh, 2008 and 2009. And uh, more seriously, uh, there are uh, first meetups. Uh, there was first, first meetups in uh, 2008 in the Central Library uh, of Rennes uh, every Tuesday uh, because of the local uh, wiki contest uh, in the French Wikipedia. 
So the library was a great place to meet, to improve articles for the wiki contest. And uh, after that, uh, we continued to meet uh, every week. And uh, now it is uh, every Tuesday, uh, Thursday. Uh, and uh, we speak uh, 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 about uh, Wikimedia, uh, uh, Wikipedia, and uh, uh, we have uh, some actions uh, uh, to to introduce, uh, to, uh, to, enfin, to teach uh, new, enfin, new enfin, to teach people, uh, um, to teach people uh, about Wikipedia. <laughs> so, and uh, we are between uh, five and eight uh, own members, and uh, during the the operations uh, Wikipedia ties we are between uh, 10 and 15 members, own members. And uh, I let uh, Leah uh, speak about uh, our action. Yeah, maybe you heard of us because of this. Uh, for Wikipedia's 10th anniversary, we created 10 panels with Wikipedia entries in 10 points of interest in Rennes. That was the most famous of our action, but since the beginning of the Kaaba, we organized several other events. We did workshops every month about Wikipedia and uh, sister projects like Common, Wikisource, and Britain Wikipedia. We present the project, explain how it works, then we help the attendees for their first step on contributing. We built friendly relationships with local GLAMs and work together to free some cultural content. We help the local archives to import some of their documents and comments and organized a workshop inside the archives to contribute about Rennes' history. We did the same a year later with the regional museum, Musée de Bretagne. And uh, we just established a partnership with the Science University to take pictures of their biology collections and train their students. We also work with the first library in Rennes where we organize workshops and conferences. Since the beginning of our actions, we participate to existing events, science and culture festival, and of course with people who share our worldview, free software events, open street map, mapping parties, and other events about free culture and the commons. Three or four times a year, we like to organize a photo excursions called Wiki Takes Somewhere, um, that's easy. You take a group of Wikimedians, choose a place where pictures are missing, you let them free with cameras, and magic happens. It's nice occasions to meet some local Wikimedians. Oh, and don't forget to torture them uh, for they import their pictures on comments. Uh, last but not least, the most motivated of us meet every week in a bar uh, on Thursday evening. We drink beers and uh, talk about anything in the wiki world. Of course, we work too. The weekly meetings are the best moment to regularly work on all the points I just told you. Uh, but I will let Nicola present you all the benefits of drinking beer every week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, you know now what is Venseo? And we tried a lot of people ask us what why do you meet every week? How do you manage to succeed it? Um, why, how, what? We want to do the same thing, things like that. So we've self-analyzed ourselves a little bit, psychiatrist plan. And we found the uh, three uh, case success factors, which are uh, proximity, regularity, and smoothness. Um, First, the proximity is obviously the, the key factor in Rennes because we all live in Rennes, 10 people in the little city. It's uh, the proximity helps us a lot. Um, but there's other people uh, in Bretagne, not so far, so we meet them uh, from time to time. Um, then is regularity. And um, in Rennes, we meet every week. And with the other people I spoke uh, about, 
we meet every two months or so for photo events, like uh, Leah said, for example. And uh, the third factor is the smoothness, and it's maybe the most important because it balances the two previous factors. Because if you meet every week, it's not mandatory to be all of the people every week uh, in the bar. You don't have to drink beers every week. You can skip one or two weeks. You can go in vacancy, drink beers with other people. <laughs> but you can do that too. So smoothness is very important because it's what makes the, the success of the, of the meetings. The NCO is here every week, but not all of the NCO. So basically that's it. Okay, so uh, everything is not so easy and uh, we had difficulties to overcome. First was getting known. Uh, both inside and outside the community. Inside the community, <coughs> um, Leah basically uh, looked for editors and uh, spammed them. Uh, we searched uh, editors with, uh, via their user boxes and categories. Uh, it's a quite a powerful tool to, to reach with uh, interesting people. Uh, you can also search in uh, local projects or local uh, or editor on local, local topics to find people interested in uh, your local <coughs> community. Um, but once you found people, you, uh, you need to keep in touch with them too. So, um, we spam them. Don't die. This is not beer. <laughs> uh, you need to keep in touch uh, with discussion pages. Uh, you need to create um, a page for your local group too in uh, Wikipedia. and. Uh, most of all, drink beers. Yeah, I have it. We use social networking too. Uh, we are very um, active on Twitter, but uh, Facebook and so are useful too. Uh, and we uh, work through mailing lists provided by uh, Wikimedia France uh, to, to keep in touch both locally in Rennes and to a larger scale uh, in Brittany or the wide west of France. You also need to get known outside of the community and uh, for this, you can get in touch with local media, local groups, associations, and local institutions, such as libraries, universities, and museums. Second difficulty to overcome is timidity or uh, fear of failure. But it's not a big deal. Uh, you just uh, don't uh, run for your life uh, when you try to run a local group. Uh, you have no engagement and success, and uh, nobody will come to torture you if you uh, fail <laughs> at some point. Uh, and you better try and fail than never try at all anyway. So just uh, start little and build it up. Uh, you have time to build your local group. But don't, don't bite more than you can chew. Uh, this is not your job. Uh, it might become for some, but uh, to start, it's not, a, it's not an everyday job. Uh, but stay professional in what you do. Uh, make plans and uh, don't forget the bus factor. <laughs> which is uh, one of your members could be hit by a bus and uh, <laughs> it didn't happen <laughs> no. and uh, it uh, shouldn't stop the local group and don't hesitate to call for help uh, to the broader community uh, you can uh, seek help uh, from your chapter or from the community or cousin projects too like uh, OSM we uh, have regular meetings in Rennes with uh, Western projects, and uh, maybe you can call the government too. <laughs> Don't get discouraged, uh, it won't work at the first time. It needs time to build a community, to build a friendship, and to have something that works. Uh, build on continuous improvement, uh, just watch for what doesn't work and keep on trying to improve this. Uh, if you try to organize um, edit items or uh, photo runs, uh, having few participants is not a tragedy. Um, it's not because you have only three or four participants that uh, it's a failure. Um, maybe you can be more efficient with few people and uh, teach more things than with a large crowd that uh, will get uh, disturbed. And don't trap yourself too. Uh, don't try to do everything just by yourself. 
uh, share the work within your local group. Uh, don't get bur burnt out. Um, keep in mind also the ivory tower syndrome. Uh, once your local group is constituted, uh, let new new people enter and uh, don't just uh, let them outside. And uh, keep it simple. Uh, just uh, remember that uh, you can still drink beers <coughs> when you when you like, and you don't need uh, three paper appliment uh, files <coughs> to get into the group. And last but not least, uh, don't let contributing get out of sight. The primary goal uh, of the movement is still uh, contributing to Wikimedia projects, and uh, after a few beers, sometimes you tend to forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> so next. Pierre is going to talk about swarming new capacities. So, um, based on what we have done in uh, in Rennes, and uh, due to the proximity with other cities, uh, Brest and Nantes, and Nantes, we had uh, been contacted by people um, people interested in in, uh, in projects and contributors in Brest and Nantes. Both of the city have, have differences, and that shows us that what what was successful in Ren in Ren uh, could not be as successful in Brest or not because of the context. For example, in Brest, we are a strong involved uh, uh, politic political community, and politics are strongly involved in free culture, in open source, in open data. So it was easier to convince authorities and uh, uh, institution of uh, how good are uh, Wikimedia and uh, Wiki project. Problem of uh, political institution in Brest was more to find people to contribute and to have uh, uh, a group of contributors. In the other hand, in North, uh, we had, uh, there are people interested in uh, in projects but uh, no one is uh, really uh, really uh, involved in uh, in uh, wiki project and uh, there are people involved in uh, in, uh, in free culture in um, free uh, free license but they wanted us to help them to build a community so recently we went to these two cities Drink beers, and uh, we are trying to set uh, with them and to, to, to build with them a, a user group, a, a group of contributors. But as it was said before, it will take time. So I hope they won't be discouraged by the, the fact they are. Uh, it's still a little bit slow to 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 be uh, to be built. And uh, up in, they won't be discouraged. But the fact is, in the contrary of the picture I put in, in this uh, in this slide, we don't have to appear as a mother cover. We don't have to be every time the one who leads the other little ducks to follow us. We have to learn. They have to learn, and each one has to learn to fly with it. Uh, with, uh, with uh, its own wind. So I think that one thing important to build a local group and to build a local group that works is to find a project to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to make. And first say we will do this. And if we are if uh, the project uh, meets interest of the people, it will be by building this uh, project that other projects may come and friendship and other things. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, you have discovered our recipe. Uh, I will try to, to put it in a, in a nutshell. Uh, first something very important 
is be aware of others. We are not just Wikipedians, we are Wikimedians. We contribute to Wikimedia Commons, we contribute to Wikisource, we contribute to Wikipedia in other languages, to the dictionary, to Wikidata, to, to the movement. Uh, it's very important and because you, you can uh, have a lot of, uh, of well, you, if you are not only on Wikipedia, you will discover a lot from other people. Uh, we, we have explained it about uh, OpenStreetMap, for example. We are joining them. We are also active ab about open content. We, we try to be active in our city in order to promote, uh, you know, the you know the sentence uh, to be able to to give people all the culture uh, <coughs> freely. We try to do this. Uh, we are active in our city uh, <coughs> with local glams, with uh, politics, with uh, many people. We try to make them aware of what we do. And uh, we are also very active on the local economy because, uh, as you have understand, we drink beers. <laughs> uh, yes, be, being an actor of, uh, in your city, uh, if you want to do this, you have to communicate. You have to uh, show what you do uh, because people will not you. People don't know how Wikimedia movement works, so it's very important to show them. The, the food is for the lag. Uh, it's very important to show them. Uh, another key point is to progress at your own speed. Uh, it's not. It's not a race. Uh, being you, you will not be successful as a local group if you meet every week if you don't want to meet every week. Just do it as you want and always have a lot of fun. It is very, very important to have a lot of fun, to make things you like. Don't forget to contribute, for example. Uh, don't be too wikimaniac. You, you will have a big burnout. <laughs> uh, yes, try to, to work with other people as I've, all, as I've already said. but. Don't forget one thing, there is no magic recipe. We at the NCO, we try to do it uh, yeah, the way we like. It may work for you, it may, it may not work for you. It's very important to, to try, try it. Just be bold. And now, uh, yes, we are going to take your questions, so uh, Erminic will try to answer them as far as she can. And you can have many information, and please contact us if you have any questions. Uh, we will be very, very happy to, to answer them. And then, don't forget it, uh, the dark side has cookie, uh, Netherlands has two waffles, but we have Galette. <laughs> connection with Wikimedia France because uh, now Wikimedia France has uh, setting up, uh, set up uh, a new support system. We are trying to develop local groups uh, in order to have a community in, in the whole uh, territory of France. Uh, by these actions, we try to, to, to connect Wikipedi Wikimedians and uh, train new users in order to have local, more and more local communities. So we are Yes, we are supported by Wikimedia France. Of course, we are all the six members of Wikimedia France. Five of us are member or former members of the board of Wikimedia France. So we are really, really involved in uh, in this uh, in the chapter. If you have more questions, you can ask uh, Pierre Antoine, who is just in front of you, is in charge of the local development at Wikimedia France. Yeah, but. It's not uh, absolutely necessary to be a member of Wikimedia France to be part of the group. For example, we have Kevin here, uh, who is not yet a member of Wikimedia France, and it's okay, it's not an uh, obligation. We are no, no, no pressure. Uh, well, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, have about, we have about uh, half of our non-members are uh, members of Wikimedia France. Uh, the others, they can be if they want. 
first we try to be uh, a yes, fun group and contribute and do stuff about Wikimedia. And if people want to be involved, they can join Wikimedia France. It's not compulsory. I mean, it's not every two months, oh. it's every two years. No, twice a year? No, no. twice a year. Oh, more, twice no, three, more, okay. Three or four. Three or four. Yeah, it's a lot, well, yes, I think. Uh, it, it, we, ha we have several <coughs> subjects. We try to find a uh, subject. We, yes, <coughs> if we have photo, photo, if we have picture missing about a subject uh, like uh, churches or city halls in the middle of Brittany, uh, we take the car and we go. We have some small uh, wiki takes and we have big ones. It depends on, on the subject. Next week we are going to take uh, pictures in the countryside of the, um, the southwest Normandy. <laughs> Our, uh, if you want to join. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it depends a lot of uh, personal interest of the member of the group. Uh, we like a lot of uh, monuments and uh, history and culture, but it can be uh, anything else, uh, sport uh, mm -hmm. or anything. Sometimes, uh, the recipe is uh, one of us just uh, suggests this and suggests uh, we ask where we can, we can do this uh, this day, okay? <coughs> Who wants to come? You, you, okay, we go. That's all. <laughs> the first step actually is a beer. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> And in the beer we see, oh, I want to take pictures of the Mont Saint-Michel. <laughs> okay, one last question. So yes. I want to know if, if there are more, more groups like you in other parts of France. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is one. <laughs> you, you, are, you, are, you, you are this, this young guy who is, who, who is uh, from Bordeaux. In the southwest, there is uh, members of Toulouse also, and uh, yeah. I don't see others. It's some people from Paris and uh, yes, Switzerland, but no, not. <laughs> 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 we are not as awesome as they are. But <laughs> ah, you do, you 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 do great stuff. There is some local groups uh, currently in about uh, eight cities. Pierre Antoine, ten. ten. Okay, ten. Great. So and we try to 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 develop it. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask people with this logo, the big one, on their badges. We will be very happy to to answer your questions. Uh, we have galettes, and you will uh, you can try it on the Wikimedia France uh, stands at the village, the community village. And uh, thank you for coming, and thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Wikimedia Rand. Thank you, uh, Pierre-Yves, Edouard, Nicolas, Léa, Benoit, and Sebastian. Thank you again. Oh. Yes, I, I, I'm part of Wikimedia London, and we only meet once a month, and we have a city of 10 million people. How many people in when? Two hundred? Two hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand, ah. Two hundred thousand or whatever Wikidata says is the truth. But you still have the longest running meetup ever in the entire Wikimedia. I didn't know that. Ah, the, long, the longest continuous meetup. Right. Oh, yes. Does this count as a meetup? It is actually the Sunday of the month. This is our largest ever meetup. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I have next for you 10 years of Wikimania, and you're, you're lucky to be in, in the company of a very privileged elite. These are, there are only eight people in the entire world who've been to every single Wikimania. Not to be outdone in terms of cabal, we're going to have more than five people up on stage. <laughs> Ooh, it, gets, it gets better and better, ladies and gentlemen. Right, well, I'll pass you over now. We've got... Um, I only know two of them, Andrew Lee, Fuzzheado, over here, and Sam Klein, SJ, over here. But um, there's lots of them, but they'll I'm introduce themselves. I'm Phoebe Ayers, uh, from the US. I'm Ray Sheeran, from Canada. 
And I'm James Forrester from London, now living in San Francisco. But still from London. <coughs> but still from London, always from London. And we all <laughs> met in 2005 at the first Wikimania. So who, who in the room has been to at least eight Wikimanias? Raise your hands. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to come down and join us on stage, we're going to be sharing some anecdotes and getting ideas from the audience. And really, this is a con this is a conversational session. So if, if everyone wants to come down, so that uh, you can be heard, if you have cool cool things to share about the future, we're going to talk, yeah, a little about w what where Wikimania has been and then where Wikimania is going, which is an open question. And I need a Mac dongle. Does anyone have a Mac? Yep, dongle. Oh, thanks, James. <coughs> They're bringing more chairs, but they said it might take a moment. <laughs> How many people, this is your first Wikimania? Whoa. Oh. What we've learned in putting together this presentation, um, which uh, is not much of a presentation, uh, 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 more like a small collection of photos, um, is that all the Wikimanias have been very different and all the Wikimanias have been exactly the same in a lot of ways as well. Yeah, it, it, and people who have organized their own Wikimanias, I see a couple of you out in the audience. You should come closer too. You can share your Who's their organized their a Wikimania? Dural, who has, I see you. Who considers themselves an organizer oh, yeah. of Wikimania Dural. in the past? Dural. Dural. We have Dara, 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 Dara. Dara. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't tell, our ambition is to have every single person in this room actually have <laughs> 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 Which Which is really how sessions should be. Absolutely. Now. Yeah. We'll just push the table forward. This question should be about who is going to organize in the future. Come over! Right, that's right. <laughs> ah, the next one here. Here. We have someone from Mexico City here too, right? Or not? Yes. Well, they're supposed no, to be here later. Here. Okay. We were hoping the Mexico City folks would be here, but... Uh, and who else has put out a bid for Wikimania in your city? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. You guys should come down too. <laughs> That, so I can't promise a comfortable seat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we do have an etherpad there, which we'll use vigorously later on. But feel free to start jotting down ideas there. We're looking for wacky, wild, unusual ideas. And if you look at the bottom of that, you'll see. And anything that we talk about, if you want to add anything, as we walk through the 10 Wikimanias that we've had, these are just a little capsules. But please do add your favorite moments from Wikimanias into that list. We have a list of all the Wikimanias right there. So I thought we'd show this picture first, because so, uh, with, with a lot of foresight, these are the two first organizers of the first Wikimania, and they made this wonderful, I don't know, foam board at the end of the conference to say, edit this conference, and uh, we've been doing it every year since then. So, does it, everyone knows who this is? This is Arne Klempert and uh, Delphine Menard. So I think, I believe the first Wikimania was just organized in a bar, just said, we should have a meeting of Wikimanians, Wikipedians. I don't even know if they call Wikimedians at the time. Yeah, There's no. There was a discussion with uh, Jimmy and uh, uh, Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. chatting and what if? Right. Yeah, we should have an international meeting and then... Uh, so it's more, almost like a, a meetup on steroids rather than a full <laughs> conference <laughs> in, the, in the early conception, right? So I thought we'd just step up through some of the more interesting things from that first Wikimedia. Um, this, this is still useful today. This was Delphine Menard's bedside manner when telling people, get the hell out of my planning room. If you want to work on something else or want to talk about all the world and his brother, you might want to consider turning around and sitting down elsewhere. Thanks a lot. That's about as nice as Delphine gets when in planning mode. So that was, that's a sign I took a picture of and we can appreciate 10 years later. Every year since we've had a planning room, and it's always the same. Turn around and go away if you're torn to plan. But it just shows how enthusiastic Wikipedians are. They want to try to help. They want to try to get involved. And then the, sometimes the organizers just have to kick people out, <laughs> saying, please find some other way to, to pitch in. Right. Uh, so Wikimania would not be Wikimania without huddles, ad hoc huddles and gatherings like this. Some of you might recognize folks here. These are folks who, are, who became board members or leaders, but this was just like the first casual meetup. Wikimania would not be Wikimania without a viewing of uh, Wikipedians of the media story in that town about Wikimedia, uh, Wikimania, right? So this was in Frankfurt watching the first uh, news report about Wikimania with Jimmy on television. And strangely enough, 10 years later, this was just a few days ago <laughs> in the hotel bar. So I was just like, 
blown away. We have this, and we have this, and this is the, the bar where we're watching the BBC piece that Jimmy was doing. It would not be Wikimania without celebrating Jimmy's birthday. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So this is Florence and her, her wonderful artistic skills in picking out alphabet soup letters. <laughs> no, no, I, be I believe actually that was Jello that she put alphabet <laughs> jello. letters yeah, into. Jello. In jello. That was the high quality of dessert that we had at the first Wikimania. It was Jello. <laughs> It would also not be Wikimania without surprise appearances by Richard Stallman, invited <laughs> or uninvited. He was invited for this one. And him trying to hand out stickers furiously at the end of his talk. It would also not be Wikimania without complete disastrous audio problems happening all over the place. And it also would not be Wikimania without some ad hoc Wi-Fi setup like this one. <laughs> This is no joke, this is the actual Wi-Fi router at Frankfurt 2005. Hell on the wall by masking tape. The, the developers complained that the network didn't work. Austin. <laughs> yeah. Made by who? Where'd you go, Austin? Austin? Made yes. by Austin. Was that you, Austin? Yep. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> you, you, Jens, and Andrew and me taking photos. Yeah. 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 So, so this, th these are just some of the highlights of the first Wikimania, and we've had interesting times. In and it also wouldn't be Wikimania without Brian Viber getting drunk. So. We've had one without Brian getting drunk. I know, we've one without him. Yeah. Gdansk. I think that was Gdansk. Yeah. yeah, he had a wish from yeah. Right, right. So he got punchy without the alcohol. So I, I at least wanted to point this out. Please do add your name to this list, even if you've only been to one Wikimania. Um, this was originally called the Wikimania Perfect Attendance Club, but in the spirit of uh, being nice and after getting nasty messages on the talk page about how elitist it was, we turned it into the Frequent Attendees page to be nice. Um, but this is just something that we threw up because we couldn't even track anymore uh, how many people had been to all Wikimanias or all but one. So that's on Meta called Frequent Attendees. So feel free to update yourself on this list. So I thought we'd just step through very quickly each of the Wikimanias and just talk about some of the highlights and people feel free to jot down or even call out things that you remember from the uh, conference. The first one was at a youth hostel in Frankfurt. What I remember the most is beer from the vending machines 24 hours a day. That was awesome. I don't think we've ever had a Wikimania like that since. Beer, beer. Um, we had Ward Cunningham as a, talk, as a speaker, uh, Richard Stallman, Mitch Kapoor, uh, you know, creator of Lotus123, uh, entrepreneur. Um, Ward Cunningham. Ward Cunningham, yes. We shut down the Klingon Wikipedia. Yeah. 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 Yes. Farewell TLH Wiki. <laughs> we knew thee well. Was it in that courtyard we shut down Klingon Wikipedia? No, Jimmy Auditory. decreed it from the staff yeah. of the auditorium. And then Brian did it from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> This is why Wikimania conference Wi-Fi is really important because occasionally we delete wikis in the audience. <laughs> Make sure it works. Wikimania, getting shit done. Right? <laughs> 2006, Boston, we had some great speakers. Uh, Jimmy lost his laptop. That was the famous conference where he couldn't find it. I don't know what happened to his prison. What's that? I don't think so. No. <laughs> Stallman was not invited, so he decided to do his speech outside of the venue. In the yeah. courtyard. In the, in the courtyard. Standing in front of a bench. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was love. And, and like, <laughs> Clay Shirky almost showed up. Almost showed up. Yeah. For the first well, time. And Tim Berners Lee did show up, but undercover. He <laughs> <laughs> showed up and snuck into the semantic media, the semantic wiki chat, and he said, oh, don't, don't introduce me. Wow. I uh, I was working registration when Tim Bursley showed up, and I said, oh, can I make you a badge? And he said, my name is Tim. And I said, Tim what? <laughs> He's like, just Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully everyone knows Tim Bursley lees the creator of the web. So he was just a casual guy at our conference. But, um, we had a pitch contest here. Was that the was it Computer History Museum? The Computer History Museum. Yeah. 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 That, was on the, that was cool. Uh, 2007 Taiwan, people still don't believe us, but there was in fact a gigantic puzzle sphere created, and there it is. I, I don't want to call it life size. Yeah. Who still has a piece of it? Yeah. <laughs> so it was intact the whole conference. At the very end, we smashed it into dozens and dozens and dozens of pieces. And each person. First, they had to assemble it. The first part of the conference was assembling the puzzle ball, and then we took it all apart again. 
Well, one of the great bits is that we didn't actually have a 3D logo at the time. We just had a fake 3D logo. So no one knew what was on the back. So they just made stuff up and put it on the back. And it's not what's on the actual back of the logo now. So we have a 3D logo now. That's not it. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's the Illuminati. <laughs> That was unusual. I think we had what 400 some attendees and like 300 local volunteers. It was kind of insane. It was almost like you had a, you had a, I don't know, someone escorting you everywhere. And uh, as part of the continuing theme, that was also in a youth hostel like 2005, and it was also in a monsoon like this year. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the first one that Sue Gardner, the new executive director, had attended. Uh, 2008, on, Alexandria, Egypt. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Yeah. I think you forgot to mention one big thing that I didn't see happen anywhere else. We had a huge board with the... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. We have the actual we Ricky schedule. Yeah. So, so the schedule had been printed off onto uh, a cloth, a lovely cloth uh, banner that was strung up in the main kind of lobby area. But unfortunately, people changed their minds or they don't turn up, and it had been printed. So people started putting masking tape and post-it notes and little stickies on, on the program, and suddenly it was the schedule anyone can edit. And it was great. <laughs> It used to be like the standard picture for all Wikimanias. Where is it? Yeah. On schedule here. Here. And the thing is, we've tried to do this every year since. I mean, every year, of course, the schedule gets made and it gets changed. It happens this year. It happens every year. But it turns out. In my opinion, the editing on the board was, in fact, the most efficient way to do it. Because you could just get out your edit conflicts right then and there. No, I want to be in that time slot. Yeah. For future plans for Wikimania, this is a great feature. If you can replicate it somehow, it would be kind of cool. Uh, OK, so 2008, Alexandria, Egypt. Um, how many people here in Alexandria? Nice. One of the tougher ones to get to for some folks. So. This was co-located with the new Library of Alexandria, had Arabic language track, and this was in many ways the start of our formal GLAM engagements, right? Mm. So, Phoebe, you want to talk a little bit about that? Oh yeah, so we were right next door. We were in part of the Library of Alexandria, which is a venue and event space, but the Library of Alexandria also has a library attached to it, and so at the end, um, <laughs> the librarians uh, asked us to uh, come and talk to them about Wikipedia. And it was the first uh, formal talk to librarians that uh, several of us had given. Um, that was also the year, Andrew, I don't know if you remember, but that was the year I ran a sock puppet making workshop. <laughs> <laughs> it, sock was puppet pretty, it was pretty good, you guys. I brought two suitcases that year. One had my things, and the other had sock puppets. <laughs> and what's even better is that uh, there's a kindergarten, a preschool, attached to the Library of Alexandria. The kids go and they like hang out in the library for the day. It's great. And the uh, woman who was running that class of kindergartners said, oh, can I bring my kids over to see your sock puppet making workshop? And I said, of course. And so we had 30 of us and 20 small Egyptian children, all making sock puppets with the googly eyes and <laughs> felt. It was pretty delightful. <laughs> hey, we've got almost all the folks here on uh, the Sock yeah, Puppet yeah, Theater. Yeah, there they yeah, are. Yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> we got to revive the Sock Puppet, sock puppet and Workshop, a maker fair for sock puppets. So. Good. So 2009 saw Buenos Aires, Argentina, our first and only Wikimania in the Southern Hemisphere, right? And it has Spanish language track there. Mm -hmm. We actually need a security. Tell us. Well, that one, because I don't remember how many laptops got stolen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a, a bad Wikimania for theft. Yeah, cool. I, we, 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 I wasn't there, but I remember people complaining about it because they had Wi Fi, so. Uh, well, that's every that's Wikimania. Every, yeah. 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 <laughs> There's no good Wikimania Death, for Wi Fi. Taxes, sunrise, sunset, bad Wi Fi at Wikimania complaints. <laughs> <laughs> and there, Richard Stone. Oh, oh yes, yes. and yeah. he, he took us to task about how about our various processes, and he started um, being angry at the English Wikipedia about his article from his keynote speech. Yes, yeah. um, which culminated in him standing in the middle of the break room where everybody was ha where, where everybody was eating and shouting that we were trying to silence him, but there was a meeting planned in 
that room in half an hour. And would everybody please go? And then when he was speaking, demanding that certain banners be taken down or he wouldn't speak. Interesting. And then we had Tango Lessons. Which is what this yeah. is. And uh, everyone, everyone who had always wanted to learn how to tango <laughs> got a, a beautiful professional lesson. And some people who didn't want to learn how to tango. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And we, and we were there in the middle of the, of the annual international tango competition. So some people snuck away to see that. Well, uh, 2010, Gdansk, Poland. Uh, nice thing about having Wikimania in a small town is it was really easy to find everyone in the town square. So that was one of the nicer things about Gdansk. Lots of cultural activities. They had a symphony orchestra perform for us, right? <laughs> the only and, and the World Cup final was, was yeah. seen oh, from that's the, right. the, the yeah. main town square. Uh, FIFA decided to celebrate Jimmy's birthday with the World Cup final. <laughs> 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 and so there was quite a party atmosphere. It was great. <laughs> End of conference, Jimmy's birthday, World Cup final. <laughs> and for folks who don't know about Wikipedia's history, there's a we reason why it was an unusual city like Gdansk, because of a, a famous edit war, the most famous edit war in Wikipedia history, in English Wikipedia at least. Well, tell us about it. Oh yeah, um, so uh, Gdansk is a city that for some of its history has been called other names by other people. Discuss. And uh, uh, MediaWiki only lets you have one name for an article and consequently you get favoritism and uh, there was um, some extensive discussion about whether it's appropriate to call Gdansk Danzig and no one liked the compromise solution of calling it Gdansig. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, it was it was pretty pretty vicious for a long time in one of our very early edit wars. Uh, one of the other things that was great about Gdansk was um, that a large number of people uh, took the train uh, from London via Cologne, Amsterdam, Paris, and we all converged on a lovely sleeper train through um, from Germany, to, to from uh, Indian to Poznan, and then um, tried to work out where on earth in Poland we'd actually ended up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great. Um, and I'm never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> the, main, it, it, the main thing I remember about Dansk is, is the geography. So it's a small town, there's a town square, and there's water, there's a river, and there's bridges, like so. But some of the bridges went to the venue, and some of the bridges didn't. And some of the bridges would take you to your hotel, and some of the bridges wouldn't. And so there was a lot of like back and forth thing going around the town that was involved. All right, so 2011 Haifa, Israel. Woo. Woo. Where are Haifa folks? Yes. <laughs> so I think it was the first ever Wikimania beach party and started a tradition of winding up with your feet in the water of the ocean there, which is awesome. And a Hebrew language track, had a large, I think it was the biggest splash of glam at the time, right? We had a lot of folks who were putting their academic studies and careers behind glam at this conference. And that was amazing um, to see that at this conference. Dora, any comments from you? <laughs> yeah, there were great tours. Great. Uh, Washington, D.C., so this was more mat mat maturing of the glam movement. The largest one to that date, 1,400 attendees. We had our opening ceremony in the Library of Congress, which, sh which had like lots of big wigs and suits and ties, and we were dressed as Wikipedians. No, no, <laughs> we weren't. Remember, James asked us to dress up for the very first opening party, and a lot of people did. And let me tell you what, I have never seen Wikipedia. As I have <laughs> we clean up okay. Didn't we? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So uh, we had. Yeah, I'm wearing a bow tie. <laughs> yeah. There you are. <laughs> um, one of the big things was David Ferriero gave the closing keynote. Was that right? Yeah. Yes. The head archivist of the United States, and he's a huge Wikipedia fan, and uh, was was a huge endorsement for what we were doing there. Yeah, and, and one of the conference tracks was sponsored by the State Department. Right, yeah. Right, so it was kind of a joint thing with the State Department there. It was also uh, the first Wikimania where the education program was really big, and I think the people in the red shirts are from or related to the education program in that photo, which is a very good use of 
are colour coordinated wardrobe <laughs> dressage <laughs> in, in Wicked Mania photography. We, are possibly the only example today. No, there's the V t-shirts, my friend. That doesn't count, that's just T-shirts. <laughs> Great. Uh, 2013, Hong Kong? Derek? Derek. 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 Cantonese, Chinese language content. We had, our, we had a party both at the beach and 100 stories up in the air. So you I want. On a boat. If, if you were invited, you'd know that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't. Aww. Aww. Ooh. Because I was being taken care of all of you in the actual venue. <laughs> <laughs> that, thank you for giving up your seat to me. It was great. It's the best VIP party ever. The one on the and then we also, I think it was the first time we had the Kazakhstan uh, yeah. contingent. Right. Anyone here from Kazakhstan? Yay! Yeah. And they're back again this year, so which is great. Not the same folks, I think different folks, right? Yeah. And also, also the, um, the chapter's village concept really took off right. um, yeah. last year. I mean, there was like sort of a stall in 2012 from Wikimedia Deutschland, I think it was. Yeah. Is that is yeah. Nicole here? Oh. Yeah, but it was, it was her idea, Nicole Emma's idea, and right. we took it forward and did it. So, here we are, finally, 2014. <laughs> I don't say it. anything, we're here. We're, <laughs> we're doing it, we're experiencing it. Is anybody it. here not gone to Wikimania 2014? It's <laughs> 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 right outside. <laughs> without heat issues? Without without heat issues? Rick, have you been to London recently? <laughs> <laughs> Next year looks amazing. This is in Mexico City, where there's a picture of the Mexico City team put up. And it's being done in, I guess, the same type of theme as in Alexandria in conjunction with the library. Right. Yeah, I've heard um, very good things about uh, the library's um, facilities that they build custom for each conference that happens there. And you know, they're working right now to, to work with the team to work out exactly what kind of sets they, we need for yeah. Wikimedia 2015, which and is going to be crazy. And Mexico will present tonight after Jimmy, so we will all get a little taste of what they're hoping for. But for those of you who are here for the first time, you have to remember, you'll be asked for your comments in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> so just to remind you, we have this etherpad up there. Feel free to jot down anything, either memories or ideas. There is a lunch in the conservatory upstairs. Some folks from the Frankfurt original Wikimania want to get together, but it's open to anyone. Feel free to come by. Um, I guess there's another group that's doing it at the same time. I can't remember. Wiki that Women. Did. Wiki Women? The Wiki okay. Women. Great. Um, and then Phoebe has been the champion of trying to put as much knowledge about planning Wikimedia or Wikimania down into a wiki. So there is the Wikimania handbook. If you just Google that, you'll find that. So please, you want to give a pitch to your own handbook? Uh, lots of people have helped out with it at this point. It's, um, uh, uh, it's gotten much bigger. Um, it could still use a lot of work. But the documentation that we have is all on edit. Everything's open. Um, everything that we know from all these adventures. Great. So why don't we bring up the pad? And if anyone has any ideas, I mean, I'll throw out my pet idea that I've always wanted to do that if we had the bandwidth to do it here, is a newbie pavilion, which is basically having a whole section open to the public to say, come on in, almost like an Apple Genius Bar. Like, if you ever want to edit Wikipedia, come on in. We're going to have tutorials every hour, you know, from 9 to 5 to get new people to come in, or a common scanning station, or something just to get the public to walk up, almost like when they have Super Bowl or World Cup soccer, they have pavilions for people just to try things out to demystify things. So that was my my dream for Wikimania if we had the resources to do that. You're giving up on your dream of flying around the world, Andrew? No, I'm not giving up on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> but other ideas that people had, either for folks who've bid or haven't bid or just had a wacky idea out there? Yeah. Yep. I think you need to have some lightning talks. Yeah. Because there were so many people who, you know, whose uh, papers were not accepted that right. had fascinating projects I'd at least like to know a little bit more about. So having a session of lightning talks I think would be a great idea. Again, because we had it in play. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, we've had small sessions of lightning talks, but I would love to see a much bigger track of lightning talks and like a whole moderated room, you know, for the whole day where people can go and have time. So, there was yeah. a full lightning talk track in Hong Kong attended by five to ten people on average at, at one point. So yeah. Yeah. It did happen. Yeah. 
it, it's sometimes tough to get it the balance right against other sessions, but we should make sure we, we just have to have that every year. I agree with that. Great idea. I'd be interested in views about kind of the structure of the program generally, actually. So we used to have uh, a poster track, which we didn't have this year or the last year. Since high school. Since high school. Yeah. Um, we had an academic track for a few years, um, most notably in 2006, where the proceedings of Wikimania 2006 were published, thanks to uh, SJ and Phoebe being fantastic. Um, is that something that's of interest? Is yes. that something we'd like to do again? Yes. Uh, okay. I think the poster track definitely would help. <laughs> right now, we end up with a very large number of cons uh, concurrent sessions, mm -hmm. a lot of which are not You're right. If we can limit it to maybe four tracks max, and then do posters and other little, small contained pieces, that would be interesting. Um, what I wanted to say about the tracks, um, basically having done this for the since high for the last five years, we estimate how many people will come, and then we need to make sure that everybody has a seat somewhere. So if you expect 2,000 people Why? and you have rooms for 200, you need 10 tracks to feed everybody. So that, that was the logic behind it in the last five years. Uh, trying to estimate how many people will come to each lecture, not to have a room overflowing and right. empty rooms, which is really difficult to estimate as you don't know how many people are coming. And these things work differently. The important thing that, well, writing talks we tried a couple of years and it didn't work, that's why it was stopped. This year we tried the discussion track, which I was sure it was not going to work, and I was really surprised because it worked. we about the discussion, right. and the interpret had amazing brainstorming ideas which should be really learned. And I think this Good, good idea. The disc I went to one of those, they were great, the discussion tracks. Yeah. Um, last year we also suggested the track called the hot seat, and we we'll tried again this year and it didn't really work out, which means taking somebody from the foundation, putting him on stage, and having him have to answer questions for 30 minutes. <laughs> and I didn't really want that. I wanted the board member on the stage every day for like half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we're here for you, Bob. We <laughs> Oh, sorry, go ahead. Other questions? We just have Other a few ideas. minutes. Other ideas, yeah. Um, I know that we are, you know, we are, you know, we are a little bit. When, when, when we mentioned that uh, Buenos Aires is today the only one hosted in the Southern Hemisphere, are we going to try to maybe encourage more geographical diversity <coughs> in locations? You know, because I think that was good, and, you know, it really stands out that, you know, you know when we point out that's the only one that's been hosted in the Southern Hemisphere, even, even though I know there was a pretty strong bid for Cape Town for next year. I, I, so, as someone who is, has deliberately chosen not to be on the jury for this uh, for 2015 and 2016, hurrah! Um, uh, I think that having an arbitrary selection criteria like it must be in the Southern Hemisphere this year is really hard. Or, well, because it's in the Southern Hemisphere, we'll give them extra points, even though we think it will be a disaster. That's not the right thing to do. We should always make the selection on the best possible location. And so, the work. Um, for people like us, you know, experienced Wikimaniacs, is to, uh, yeah, no one uses that term, um, <laughs> uh, is, is to actually reach out to people who are thinking about doing a bid, and especially for people in the Southern Hemisphere, but for everyone, and say, hey, you know, let's help you craft that bid to be a really fantastic and excellent bid on its own legs, yeah, not because it's in the Southern Hemisphere it gets special treatment, but because it's great, it's a fantastic bid, and we've had some really fantastic bids that just have missed. And I'd really like to compare that to. James, do really you want to maybe take a minute and just explain what the current state of things is about the Wikimania Committee? And the sure, chair? yeah. I'm yeah. chair of the Wikimania Committee, uh, which is semi-active, but creates um, the jury each year and kind of sets the overall tone. Um, and we kind of liaise and, and bring together a lot of things. Um, we aren't really quite sure how the committee is working out and whether we want to change it a bit, um, says James very clearly. But uh, there's um, there's certainly lots of there's now a place where we can make decisions like actually we want Wikimania to be four days long, not three. 
you know, things like that, which have always been, everyone's not quite clear whose decision it is. We can actually now have a place to make that decision. Yeah. So, and and I, I would also say that um, there, are always, uh, there are always ideas about helping people run regional events in addition to running a, a, nat a global event. And one of the things that comes out of the bids is you have a great team with a great idea. We're f looking for better ways to help say yes to more of those people. Um, it's officially the end of our session right now, but we've, the proctor has told us we can keep going, but we want to give the opportunity for people to leave if they have to go. So to um, Take a break, switch rooms if you need right. to, et cetera. We're willing to keep going because it's not often we get all these folks together. Just to answer the last question, um, actually, um, two things about Southern Hemisphere gets extra point, as James said, but it's still calculated. Cape Town was very, very close to New the Mexico City this year. It was just two points difference in the calculation. Uh, two more things, the jury and the committee is actually helping the teams who want to do it to, to do the bid even before the bidding stage. So if necessary, we are actually going, seeing the site. We've been here last year, before, a year before. Uh, we went to another site, so part of the team went to Mexico City even before being awarded. So we can help with the bid to make it better. So please come forward and just ask for help. Um, we want as many more bids as possible. One more thing we want, to work longer in preparing the conference. So the bidding is moved forward. It's been proposed that the jury, I think the call for jury members went out yesterday. Um, I, I didn't see it, but I know it went out. Uh, we have already a large group of volunteers, but there's still room for more jury members. You need experience, you need to have attended some, but people are welcome. And uh, the bidding is going to start earlier this year. I think it's going to start in September and end in December, giving more time to prepare. So if you want, start working on it. And it is customary that some members <coughs> stay a day later. I'm, I'm planning on staying tomorrow. If anybody wants help with that, I'm willing to stay the next day tomorrow and help with anybody who wants to bid next time. And we already have one really cool bid for 2016, which uh, I've seen and I've sent informed you about. So whoever bid has a really tough challenge. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there are three more people here. Yeah, please. One thing I really like definitely make that more coordinated. Right. Great, another? Uh, yeah, yes. just one, one more aspect with the, with the academic side of it. You see, for somebody working in academia, there's always two, two points uh, that you need to attend. Uh, you need to get, you need to find funding, and you need to have an accepted talk. Uh, even, even if you don't find it interesting at all, give us Give us uh, 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 you know, a broom chamber somewhere, uh, a room three by two meters, but, but, don't, <laughs> but don't stick a rejected uh, thingy on my proposed talk that I'm having a tough time explaining to my boss that, that they invited me, they paid for me, but uh, actually they didn't accept my talk and you know, they, right. that's difficult. Wikimania, Wikimania has always had this tension of being many things for many people. It's, it's everything for our entire community, and that includes the academic side of things. It also includes the meetup side of things, you know, um, going to a Wikimania just to meet the people who are working on um, the things that you are working on, which is not, I shouldn't say just, it's a, it's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And at the same time, people need to give talks, and, and so there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of competing interest. When Drew talks about the rooms and scheduling the rooms, um, we need a hundred rooms or we need one room. It's never quite clear how to make that work. Yeah, but I mean, how difficult can it be to say, if I can tick a box and say, I absolutely need this talk accepted, whether, whether you're gonna put it anywhere. 
uh, how difficult can it be to say there's the insider's corner somewhere in in in, in on floor minus two? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that can't be difficult to organize. Okay. And it would make my life easier. But this time again, you did accept the talk, but you didn't accept the talk that 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 results from my research. So uh, what do I tell my boss? You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Two more there? Yes. take back my comment and defer to Durar because he, he's the pro at, at uh, programming. But it does bring the question of how big should Wikimania be? It's no, yeah. my On the one hand, in my view, yeah. we are not going to tell anybody you can't come to Wikimania. It's against the basic right. idea of the movement. Anybody who wants to come can come. On the other hand, we do want to scale down a bit. When it's too big, people can't meet, can't talk, lose each other. I don't know the answer. I think the, the, the solution would be in the choosing. If we choose for a bit somewhere that's a bit further away, less people will come. <laughs> but it would allow more people to come from that region. So there's never an answer. I, I shouldn't say we should always go and do it, do it in a football stadium. <laughs> uh, we can do it in a s small school somewhere, yeah. but we can't do it in a football yeah, stadium. Yeah, yeah. Just we keep an open mind to everything. You I, I think it's increase the price. My suggestion about it is that um, there is an optimum because we don't need to find it. Um, from my five years of attending Wikimania, actually the really cool things of Wikimania happen outside the talks. Mm -hmm. Wikimania is just a space for Wikimedians to meet. So what size you make, it doesn't really matter. When you put people in the same place, things will happen. It, to, to me, the, the tracks are actually more like a kind of entertainment and informative um, <laughs> sessions for you to get to know things rather than players where things really happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. so, so I I lean towards the group of Duro's idea that we just number the tracks by a number the, of people. Well, we could also kind of demand that um, <laughs> If you want, if you have a kind of main conference hall of n people, then you have to have four uh, halls of a quarter of n people, or whatever, and then that's the four tracks. Um, right now, we kind of uh, let you bid with a big hall that can fit everyone you want to come, and then uh, just say, "Well, we'll just find the little rooms and squeeze them together." Um, but you can't, you know, take three, two, one hundred person rooms that are a hundred meters apart and say it's one conference room. Um, well, without some magic. I think we have to let people go, but we're going to stay here. You folks who have questions, come on up. We want to hear them. Um, so. Well, what is the solution to, to that? Because I'm an organizer of a big convention in Germany. Come on up, come on up. We can't hear you anyway, yeah. so come on up. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for Thanks coming for to our entertainment. And here's to Wikimania. <laughs> Oh, okay. no, I'm no, 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 no,